Dance Film Festival. Uh, so when, when's the first time you actually get your hands on a camera, you get to, to make something? Uh, the, the next uh, bit of it is just school where uh, I had some time on my hands when I was in my last year at school and I went to see the headmaster and said I'd like to make a film, Super 8, black and white. And uh, he said I'll give you a hundred pounds. And uh, uh, we made a film uh, with a soundtrack, uh, a separate soundtrack of just music. And that gave me a taste for it, really. It was, um, we, we filmed everything that was going on in the school, like would do, showed it, and it was the first film, one of the first films that made a profit. <laughs> You've made more than 100 from, absolutely, from yeah. the screen. Yeah. I went to uh, Ranks, I think it was, and probably Technicolor, and said, uh, I'm Roger, I'm, I love film, uh, I want to join your organization at the very base of uh, filmmaking. And of course, they threw me out. Um, then I uh, considered my position and thought, obviously, I'm being too keen. So then I went to a lab called Humphreys, which was in uh, Whitfield Street, uh, just one road away from Tottenham Court Road. And uh, I, the, the guy said, why do you want to come here? I said, well, I want the money. And he said, uh, do you know anything about film? I said, no, nothing at all. And he said, you're in. <laughs> Spent two very good years there, earning some good money, I must say, being able to buy things that I'd not been able to do before, because I was quite ancient by this stage, and uh, getting my union ticket. I think learning to cope with um, the Steadicam, really, is, I think, one of the greatest challenges for me, because one of 20 years ago, there wasn't such a thing, and it's a fantastic tool isn't it to uh, be able to wear the camera and to do things that uh, to do shots which uh, the length of which you couldn't have done before so but the downside of that for if you're lighting a theatrical piece where um, the way the thing looks is part of the story uh, you're confronted with a camera then that can look almost in every direction and when I did uh, Frankenstein with um, Ken he wanted to do that. He wanted to get a lot of footage shot in, in one take. And the film was made uh, for 800,000 or something ridiculously small. And um, uh, things like the jokes, like the coconuts, are the fact they couldn't afford horses. That was the, that was the yeah. truth of it. But, uh, uh, so and you you your you were clapper loading were you on on no, Mike's I was film and yeah. then you get brought across by Mark the full staff of the producer into into the Holy Grail. Well, uh, I was the sort of dog's body driver, and then uh, Terry was as usual did what he's always done, which is to put the camera there on the ground on with a, um, a probably the widest lens was a fourteen point five mil then. Mm. This was normal thirty five. And, uh, but unfortunately, um, we had forgotten the 14.5. And Terry's mem remem uh, remembrance of it is that he turned to uh, and said, look, we need the 14.5. I said, I'll go and get it. And then he thinks he turned around and I was there. And I've got the lens, <laughs> which is, cannot be true because it took me 10 minutes to run up and down. <laughs> But that's all the way down the mountains and all the way back up. And again. he's employed me ever since. Yeah, I yes. see. Yeah. Anyone who will. That next lesson run down the mountain, run back up the mountain. I presume everyone else in the crew is kind of, oh, well, it's down there. You can't have it, Terry. It's down the mountain. Isn't it? Well, I was the, young, uh, the lowest of the lowest. Yeah, 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 yeah. And enthusiastic and bouncy. If you're stuck in a desert with the sun, daylight shooting, it's very difficult to make it dark and mysterious got to be organic with the thing that the lighting has to be correct for the scene and for the physical place that you're in you can't just impose it and Terry Gilliam uh, he does that from the ground up from the design of the sets the concept the script even they're all designed into the look in a way I think if I if I was uh, offered a project which uh, for money reasons or whatever would uh, had to be shot on high def. Well, I would do it. Certainly, I would do it. But I just make sure I knew the ins and outs of what I could do and the parameters, and make sure that 
uh, the camera we chose, which I realise is absolutely critical in what it could do, whether it's a data capture uh, camera like the Thompson Viper or something, or a uh, Sony or whatever, you have to know the camera and what it can do. Don't you and plan for certain things like, isn't it? I mean, with a film camera, you can do high speed like that or slow speed, but you have to get another camera sometimes in the system. So I'd have to research it a lot, I think, before. Uh, but it's not something I would turn down. I, I think it's. It's going. It, it's it's getting uh, more uh, user friendly, isn't it?